So yeah, I've personally been seeing a lot of these mini PCs with dedicated GPUs over on AliExpress and other outlets. And of course, you know, when it comes down to it, we've basically got a laptop with no screen here, but it's still pretty amazing to see these little things running these games at 1440p so well. Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a brand new mini gaming PC that I recently picked up from AliExpress. And what makes this really nice? is we've got a dedicated GPU. It's actually an RTX GPU. And through my testing so far, this little thing can handle 1440p AAA gaming pretty well. They are manufacturing two different color variants. They've got the black and the white, and it definitely feels like it's got kind of a soft touch coating on it. So the middle is full aluminum. It's just gonna be that gray, whether you get the white or the black version. And inside of the box, along with this one that I picked up, we get a stand because this is actually meant to sit vertically on your desk. We also obviously get the mini PC and a 230 watt power supply. There was also a bag of screws along with this and I'm not exactly sure where they go. I know one of them is going to attach that stand to the bottom of the unit, but the others I just really have no clue where they need to be on this unit here. But overall, with that stand attached, I think it's a pretty good looking mini PC, super thin here, and the cooling system is pretty interesting. We will get in here in just a second. Now these are available over on AliExpress and keep in mind, we've seen a lot of mini PCs with dedicated GPUs recently. A lot of them are using laptop parts and this one's no different. That's exactly how they do it. This mini PC is known as the X37 and it's coming to us from a company known as Tai Li. I've actually never seen any of their mini PCs before, but these guys pop up all the time. They're basically using rebranded mini PCs from a single company. We've seen this time and time again over on AliExpress. And they are offering this in a couple different configurations. You can even pick this up bare bones, but the one we have here is powered by the Intel Core i7 11800H. We've got eight cores, 16 threads, with a boost up to 4.4 gigahertz. This also has a dedicated GPU. It's the NVIDIA RTX 3070. It'll do up to 125 to 130 watts, but they do offer a 3060 variant for a bit cheaper. It's got eight gigs of VRAM. You can add up to 64 gigabytes of DDR4 at 3200 megahertz, two M.2 SSDs. And these are actually Gen 3 SSDs because we've got that older chipset here with the 11800H. I picked mine up bare bones. So what I did was just add 32 gigs of RAM and a one terabyte drive. I'm also gonna be running Windows 11 Pro. And taking a look at the IO up front here, we've got USB type C. Now, unfortunately this does not support Thunderbolt 4. We've got USB type C 3.2, so it does video out. We've also got two 3.5 millimeter audio jacks and USB 3 up front. And around back, we've got a full-size HDMI port, full-size display port, dual gigabit ethernet. And I was under the impression that one of these would have been 2.5, but both of them are gig ports. Four more full-size USB 3 ports, two more 3.5 millimeter audio jacks, and another USB Type-C. Again, this will support video out. So in total, we can do four displays using both of the USB Type-C ports and that HDMI plus display port. So four monitors can be attached to this mini PC. Getting inside of this thing is actually pretty easy. We don't need to mess around with any screws. Both sides just kind of pop right off. And as you can see, we've got a pretty massive cooler here with a single fan. This is gonna cover the GPU and the CPU. It would have been really nice if we had dual fans here, but I see the way this heatsink is set up and there's really only one way to mount a fan onto this unit. It's a four heat pipe setup. And you know, we've seen this kind of chipset, the CPU and GPU and laptops before. This does look like it's definitely gonna keep this thing nice and cool. RAM and storage is located on the other side. I've just added a one terabyte drive here and 32 gigabytes of DDR4 at 3200 megahertz running in dual channel. And since I picked this up bare bones, I didn't even get Wi-Fi and Bluetooth built in. Now I can always add it. We've got a slot here for it, but I'm just gonna be using ethernet with this setup right now. All right, so here we are running Windows 11 Pro. Everything's been working out pretty well so far. Kind of wish we had a 12th gen or even a 13th gen Intel CPU, but we do have that i7 11800H, eight cores, 16 threads, 32 gigs of DDR4 at 3200. And of course, we've got that NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3070. Laptop, it's not a desktop variant, with 8 gigs of VRAM. Taking a quick look over here, wanted to see what kind of TDP we're working with. Dress that CPU out. And this does jump up to 85 watts. That little fan is spinning up. It's not horribly loud, but the cooler they're using here is not too bad. I mean, it is working pretty decently. 
Now, when we put a load on the GPU and the CPU at the same time, I'm sure we might see some higher temps here, especially after a long period of time. But the next thing I wanted to show you here was just the TGP on that 3070. Here's Furmark. We'll just go ahead and run this. 3070 maxed out at 100%, and it looks like this will boost up to 125, maybe even 130 watts, depending on what's going on. But yeah, I mean, baseline right there, 125. Clocks will get much higher than this once we're gaming. And again, you know, since we're using that CPU cooler and GPU cooler combined, once both of these start heating up, we might see these temps raise a bit. Through all of my testing, I will be monitoring those temperatures, so by the end we can see if we do hit thermal throttle or not. But the first thing I wanted to take a look at were some benchmarks. And I just went with 3D Mark. First up, we've got Firestrike coming in with a 22,018. So looking really good here, given that we've got that RTX 3070. And I also ran Time Spy, and that's coming in with a pretty strong 10,455. I mean, it's on par with laptops with similar specs here, so I think we're going to see some really good 1440p gaming. And first up, we've got Helldivers 2 1440p high settings, but you can see we've got DLSS enabled, it's set to balanced, and uh, we probably could have went to quality there, just locked this down at 60, but it's really hard for me to tell to my naked eye on any of my monitors the difference between quality and balanced with the 3070. I think it looks really good, and by the end of my run here, I had an average of 87 FPS. Next up, we've got the built-in benchmark for Shadow of the Tomb Raider. No DLSS, 1440p, very high, average of 96. Moving over to my favorite racing game right now, at least Arcade Racer, we've got Forza Horizon 5. Some new updates came out, been playing it a lot recently. 1440p Ultra, no DLSS is needed with this one because it's just an easier to run game, very well optimized. We got an average of 106 FPS with this mini PC. I also like to throw in at least one fighting game, so we've got Mortal Kombat 1, 1440p, high, no DLSS, and there's a chance we could go to Ultra here with no DLSS, but if it's needed, quality would definitely handle it. And I'll tell you, if you're into older fighting games like Injustice 2 and even Street Fighter 6, you can run at 4K on this little setup with that RTX 3070. It's definitely not a real 4K card, but there are games that work really well at those resolutions. Horizon Forbidden West. Now this one's really been hit or miss with a lot of different mini PCs and GPUs in general. I dropped this down to 1080p, high settings, and I still needed to enable DLSS. This is just a harder one to run. And I mean, even at 1080, it's great. I was hoping with that 3070, we could do 1440p. And I'll tell you, at medium 1440p with DLSS set to performance, it's possible. But I think it looks a little better like this with no DLSS at 1080. And finally, we've got Cyberpunk 2077 1440p, high DLSS. And that's really going to be your best friend. As you saw with most of these games, we're running at 1440p. We needed a little bit of resolution scale going. And it works good on the 3070. I really do wish this mini PC had a 4000 series. Even the RTX 4060 would be nice because we have the option to use frame gen. And in my experience with Nvidia's frame gen, it's really great on these lower powered systems. Another thing I was monitoring with this mini PC was total system power consumption and of course CPU and GPU temps. To check power here, I use a kilowatt meter plugged into the wall, and this is going to pull a lot more than mini PCs with an iGPU because we've got that dedicated GPU and it's using an 11 series i7. But at idle, we were pulling around 27 watts. 4K video playback, it jumps up quite a bit to 32, and I thought this was odd, but I am in performance mode. Usually with 4K, we can kind of keep around those same idle wattages. It doesn't take that much, but with this, I was using the NVIDIA RTX 3070. And of course, when it comes to 1440p gaming, we're pulling an average of 218 watts. And remember, this does come with a 230 watt power supply. So we're right there under that wattage. And when it comes to CPU and GPU temps, I thought it'd be much higher given that we've only got that single fan and it's kind of a combined heat sink. But my maximum CPU temp was 88 degrees Celsius and the GPU temp there was up to 82. So a little hotter than I was really liking, but we're not thermal throttling or anything like that. So overall, yeah, I mean, it's definitely a AAA gaming machine, and of course I thought it would be with that RTX 3070. 
I've been doing a lot of searching looking for these mini PCs with dedicated GPUs, and I've seen quite a few of these with that 11 series Intel and the RTX, be it an RTX 3060 or 3070. So a lot of companies are getting their hands on these chips and creating these mini PCs, and I think a lot of these parts are just kind of leftovers from uh, laptop manufacturers, given that 4000 has been on the market for a little while. And I'm really not complaining. I love seeing these with dedicated GPUs, and if you're interested in learning a little more, I will leave some links in the description. And if there's anything else you want to see running on this mini PC, just let me know in the comments below. But that's going to wrap it up for this one, and like always, thanks for watching.